Hey everybody, what's up? Very loud in this room. I have a fan blowing on my own Xbox 360. And um, anyway, I just, I, I'm hearing myself in my ear, so I turn that off. Um, so we're going to um, simulate Auburn versus Tulane. I'm trying to do something different here. I don't know. Um, it's supposed to be about 90 degrees at kickoff. So I'm going to change that. What's up, Mad Attack? Can you hear me? Let me know if you can't hear me or you can hear me. Let me know. So let's see how this goes. Simulating Tulane and Auburn. Auburn and Tulane kicking off Saturday at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. Auburn's a 17 to 17 and a half point favorite, depending on what sports book you look at right now. Um, I just downloaded this new roster from uh, a user on operationsports.com. We'll see how accurate it is. I looked at Auburn's roster at the very least, and it was semi-accurate, about as accurate as we're going to get at this point. As you can see, the rankings are updated. Auburn's number 10 <clears throat> on this new roster. So we'll see how this goes. But, um, yeah, anyway, I just want to come in here and more or less just chat with you guys while also watching this simulation and see how it goes. Haven't done one of these since, uh, I guess, a few weeks. There's Bo Nix. Thanks, I Barner. Thanks for signing up for Auburn Undercover. Yeah, the six for one deal, it's the best deal we've ever done. We've done it like once before. But after the big win, we wanted to take advantage of it because I know fans were really excited. So thanks for signing up at AuburnUndercover.com for the six for one deal. Six months for a price of one. Pretty good. <coughs> Again, this is a complete sim simulation. And we're just going to sit back and watch. We'll see how accurate the uh, two-lane roster is. Anthony Schwartz returning kicks. I don't know about that. So here comes the offense taking the field for the first time today. Throws it in a hurry. Hey, Seth Williams. Remember him? <laughs> first play is a pass to Seth Williams for a first down. That was a heck of a catch, by the way, uh, in the end of the Oregon game, as we all know. By the way, that, that route <laughs> crossed the middle of the field for Seth Williams, something we didn't see in the season opener. Auburn going tempo, of course, second and four, with a pass of Schwartz on the outside. Schwartz... Is not, probably not going to play all that often in this game. Um, there's the second reception. He's, um, he's still healing from his left hand injury. He'll probably play, but maybe as a decoy, like he did against Oregon. He played like one play. Keeper by Nix on the read option there. 12 yards. I've been told. Two lanes defensive lines are real. Okay. 
Two lane player down. Auburn's marching. Sorry about that. We froze for a second. Again, I don't have the best hardware, I guess. So. Are we are we not live? This says we're live. He makes it to the six yard line. Okay, Whitlow just scored a uh, touchdown. Bo Nix, four for four on that drive. Passing. He also had a 12-yard run. Perfect pass to Whitlow on the wheel route, uncovered. Wheel route is still undefeated. He makes the PAT. A nine-play, 72-yard drive, and they come away with a touchdown. Fred, I thought the offense... I run up 7 nothing early. Not a lot of touchbacks last week by Anders Carlson on kickoffs, by the way. It's a little concerning to me. He had two kicks returned last week against Oregon. Well, that's a big tackle for loss. Nick Coe and uh, Owen Papo in on that. I'll tell you what, Owen Papo had a heck of a game in his first start last week against Oregon. Third and 11 coming up. Obviously got a throw here. Auburn bringing a blitz there. They're going with the screen pass. He might get it. He's going to get the first down. Mm. Hey, JLB, how you doing, man? I'm good. Hope you're well. Chandler Wooten. Justin McMillan, the LSU transfer quarterback. Tulane is 6-1 and one with him at quarterback, dating back to last season. Tulane knocked off Florida International 42-14 last week in the season opener. They've got a new offensive coordinator. They're running, they're running some option. They're running a lot of verts. Very versatile offense. So Tulane's going to have to punt here. Hmm. Not much of a return there for Eli. The offense really came up with a nice drive there last time out, and most of those yards came through the air. Better the leaping ability. Greg Sankey or Javaris Davis. I would say Greg Sankey so far. He had a had a nice leap on the uh sidelines there on Seth Williams' touchdown. Davis not so much on that uh touchdown by the Oregon tight end. I don't know what he was thinking there. Is up by a touchdown. Seven-yard gain. Auburn moving the ball very well against this two-lane defense. Uh, Whitlow again, eight yards. Nice run there by the tailback, and it's good for the first. Well, that's a strong run. It makes a statement when you can run the ball like that. A couple of pulling uh, players there. Whitlow over the right side for a first down. <laughs> Auburn declines that obviously because the 11 yard run. Couldn't have asked for a better start here for Auburn. 
gets to about the 47 yard line. The back gets three on the carry. You know, Whitlow, as good as he played uh, Saturday against Oregon, there was one run where he bounced outside where he, it was a draw play. Much like that right there. Um, where he had a he had a wide open. Oh, Whitlow's injured here. Uh oh. So Whitlow had a wide open lane on the back side on the left side. Could have picked up like twenty yards, but he read it incorrectly. Can I show the player ratings? I don't think I can during the middle of this game. Um, Cam Martin trying to spin out of there, get zero yards. Um, I believe Bo Nix is an 80 overall in this game. Derek Brown is the highest rated Auburn player on the team. Prince Tega, I think, is number three, the left tackle, as far as ratings. You never like to have to play from behind, but a deficit well, that Whitlow injury might prove big. They just need to go out there and play. I think I kind of jinxed Auburn there by saying this is they're playing very well. <laughs> Ooh. And he's taken down. Nice run. Hopefully if everything works out with this, uh, by the way, I'll uh, upload this to YouTube as well for you guys to watch. Makes it to the 44. That's good for a gain of eight yards. That makes it second and two. Folks, that's the end of quarter number one, and we got a pretty good ball game on our hands so far. Auburn's lead is a touchdown. For quarter number two, the Tigers' running game just took a big hit there with that injury, and now they're telling us not going to be able to return today. Well. Based off what they just said, it sounds like Whitlow is completely out for the game. I don't know why this is dark. There we go. Whitlow is out for the game. Ooh, what a hit. No egg, but not any big hit. We should be back on the air here. Here's a draw. Takes it up the middle for a nice run. So, Tulane moving the ball. They're getting into field goal range here. I'll be a first down right here unless so oh, not map first down. He's got an opening. Another first down. The keeper by McMillan. Well, that's another first down, Brad. That's Man, Auburn's gone from down. looking really good to possibly being up 14-0 to Tulane with a chance to tie it up here in the second quarter. Bounce off a tackler. Gets one yard. It out to about the 14 yard All right, let's see if Auburn can stand up tall here in the red zone. Third and nine. Ball on the 14 yard line. A lot of time to throw. Throw short. That's going to be fourth down. They're going to have to kick a field goal here. All right, seven to three, Auburn. Three twenty-eight remaining in the first half. <clears throat> Bo Nix has been playing a pretty good game. Jartavius Whitlow, Booby Whitlow, appears to be out for the rest of the game after being injured in the first quarter. Nice return. <coughs> Here's 
Momentum swings have been fairly even. And with so little separation, this game can be drastically changed on just one or two plays. Auburn is up by four. Nice little play there. And they get nice yardage on that run. Bo running quite a bit more than he probably will usually in games this year. Then again, if Auburn needs him to do it, they will. That busted play. Not busted, but it was busted up by Tulane. So passing down here. From their own 38-yard line. Third down. Checking a different play. Hit the running back across the middle. Yep. Or the, mo the man that was in motion to the backfield. Cam Martin. Auburn gets a first down. Bo Nix a perfect 7 of 7 for 51 yards and one touchdown. Good blocking downfield. Looks like a safety came back down now. Oh, dropped it. Simply dropped it. Who was that? Was that Seth Williams? Third down again. It's straight up on him. That's not Bo's fault. Bo, Bo put it right where he should have. I'd run it here. But that's not the run I'd, I'd call. I don't know if i call an option. Ah, wow. Okay, so where are they at? Where are they at? What yard line are they at here? Yeah, you got to kick it, I guess. Big kick here to try to pin the offense deep in their own territory. They get this one off, and it's a beauty. Ooh, that's not a beauty. Goal line, and this will be a touchback. Aaron Sipos can't kick it like that. Quarter down. I really haven't seen too much separation between these two squads. Might be neck and neck the whole way. I don't know what Auburn's running there. He makes his way to about the uh, A gain of eight on the carry. So no, second down no. and about two yards to go. Tulane's going to use their first time out of the half here. Tulane already using timeouts. Nowhere to go. Losing yards. Chandler Wooten having a good game. If you're Auburn here, you got to consider using timeouts. You want the ball back, right? Then they get in. This is a uh, computer simulation. <laughs> Yeah, they're trying to run the clock out. Why don't you call timeout? If you're Auburn, get the ball back. Yeah, this is silly. Not good. <clears throat> It's a great job here by the quarterback of recognizing the outside linebacker blitz and delivering the football for a first down. It's first and ten. Ball on the 42-yard line. By the way, I want to thank the uh, 465 followers we've got here on Twitch. I want to appreci appreciate it. Oh, no. Pass midfield. Tulane's going to have a chance here. Before the half, if they can. I mean, they got two timeouts remaining. They got plenty of time here to go 45 yards. A little screen. They're trying to get out of bounds. Did he get there? Doesn't. Oh. They had a call timeout. From the 40 yard line. Second down. What is that guy running? Wow. Pretty good effort here by the quarterback of trying to squeeze that ball into a tight spot. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know about complete, that, Kirk. But he didn't have too many other options. That was a weird. Well, third and six. Here they go again. Another conversion. And now they're near the red zone. 52 seconds remaining. Plenty of time for Tulane, which still has one timeout. They could take the lead before halftime. 
Middle of the field again. Is that a first down? Second and inches. I'm going to say his knee was down. Clock is running. And so is the quarterback. Gets the first down. He fumbled. And that's a turnover. TD Moultrie with the recovery. Wow. Big play. Auburn needed that. Not playing very well on defense here in the second quarter. They got that. I think Schwartz will play this week. I just don't think he's going to be catching passes. He might be used as a decoy, if anything, if he does play. He played like one or two plays against Oregon. What are you doing on a bus, James? Why are you on a bus? J.J. Wilson with a 10-yard reception. Gus Malzahn said after the Oregon game they've got to get J.J. Wilson more involved, and the way to do that is for him to get more involved himself in the playbook. He, you know, he got on campus late. He's got some stuff still to learn, but he did play against Oregon. They're hoping to get him more involved in the offense because based off what I've been told, he only dropped one pass uh, in the entire preseason camp. Auburn's just running the clock out here. Oh, my goodness. Well, that will pad the stats. The Tigers lead 7-3. Oh, James is literally on a bus. Glad to have you with us on the EA Sports like his face is on a bus. Show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. David Pollock and I here in the studio to break down I am not an Auburn fan. I'm a uh, Auburn game. journalist. This I cover Auburn. Everything we anticipated it being, each team matching each other blow for blow, just a one possession game at this point. What do you James, I'm sharing this in the chat. If I can, well, it's always it's always fun to watch two teams and two games match. I don't know if I can. We, we talk about it all week and how big this game is, and it's going to come down. Oh, to I can. Plays and you know the the big play is something that we continue to beat into the ground, and which one doesn't give that up? A lot of times, you know, it's games too bad. Are lost and won by turnovers and giving it away and making that crucial mistake. You James is wrong, on a bus. Right. Literally, his face is on a bus promoting his radio show. So, pretty close game, but uh, Tulane turned it over there in the red zone while they were trying to take the lead. Tuck says he's expecting the game to be a dogfight like this. Um, I think it's very possible. After talking to some coaches this week, they, they think Tulane's uh, pretty, pretty good, particularly with their defensive line. By the way, if you hear that, that's my baby boy playing in the living room. Yeah, two lanes, six and one, their last seven games. And the common thread there is Justin McMillan, the quarterback. Ever since he was named the starter, the LSU grad transfer, they have done very well in offense. Nice little man. I saw a stat today. Um, Tulane has rushed for 100 yards or more as a team. I think it's 41 straight games, but anyway, I know that it dates back to 2015. Auburn, of course, held Oregon to under... Wow, that was a very weird play. They held Oregon to 100, under 100 yards rushing uh, last week, but Tulane's been over 100 yards in every game since 2015. That's kind of crazy in rushing. That, that'll be big. I, I think Auburn's got a chance to hold them below that, but we'll see. Tulane rushed for 350 yards last week against Florida International. Big third and ten here. A little short pass. He's going to be about five yards short. Nice stop for Auburn near midfield. Watch out. They're going to bring the heat right here. Almost ran into the kicker there. When he made the decision to return the ball, I'm sure he thought there was going to be some room to run. But boy, did it vanish in a hurry. Still, he got something. Yeah, I think Tulane, too, could win the AAC West. Absolutely. Holds a four-point lead. 
one of our insiders told us that, you know, if Tulane faced Ole Miss last week, like Memphis faced um, Ole Miss last week, that Tulane probably would have beaten Ole Miss as well. So, so it's not an opponent to take lightly at all. Now, the final score might not be, you know, what kind of everybody's kind of thinking, maybe closer, but, um, ooh, that was bad. UConn. We've got yeah. third and ten. They might as well get rid of their football program, UConn. Lot sign throws it to Schwartz. He breaks a tackle. He might meet. He's going to go all the way. Well, Anthony Schwartz, who will probably not catch a pass until the Texas A&M game, <laughs> scores a touchdown there by breaking a tackle. Along the sideline. Well, big play for Auburn. By a player who will probably only play like two or three snaps. <laughs> so Auburn's up 14-3. to three. Yeah, this is going to be a huge game for Tulane. Um, Tulane has not, you know, what was it, 98, 97, something like that, that Tulane went undefeated. Um, even so, Tulane has not defeated a ranked team since 1984. The year I was born. <laughs> is that Daniel Thomas in the backfield? First down. All day to throw. Gonna take off. Fumble. Auburn's got it. Second fumble of the game for Tulane. And he was there to get it. Downhill Brick. KJ Brick. Seth Williams in motion. Give to the middle. Cam Martin. About five-yard gain there. Three yards. My eyesight's bad. Yeah, KJ should have scooped and scored that, yeah. But it's a computer. Keeper by Nix. Ooh. Nix is going to have a good average here. Six yards per carry, 54 yards. He gets out to about the 15 yard line. That's a gain of two on the play. That makes it second and eight. Nice run to the outside. Eli Stove. Third and three. First down and a touchdown. Seth Williams. Oh, Seth. Yeah, you hear Baby Jack Jack. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> so Auburn up 21 to three here after the extra point if they make it. Doing a lot of it through the run game. And then, of course, that long pass to Anthony Schwartz where he broke a tackle along the sideline. To score a touchdown. Auburn scores off the turnover. So Tulane needs an answer here. Absolutely. They got to score a touchdown. 
There's got to be some. I mean, they don't have to, but they should. They need to. Right now. They don't have the luxury of wasting drives if they want to get back in the game. He's scrambling. I want Papo. Look at that. Big hit. Another option play. And, ooh, I thought he lost yardage on that. Jeremiah Denson on the tackle there coming up. Screen pass. Derek Brown out there. Look at that. Minus shot. One yard. Big man with a tackle. Fourth and six. Yeah, they're going to punt it. They didn't burn too much time off the clock, but they're burning it now, not snapping the ball. He's got a chance here. Nope, nope. He's taken down at the 39 yard line. The Tigers have shown here in the third quarter they're not content to just sit on that lead they built the first half. Well, they did a nice job in the first half, but the adjustments that they made at halftime have allowed them to find some matchups to their All advantage. Right, let's see what Auburn can do here at the 40. They moved the ball very effectively on their last drive, which ended with a touchdown. The D's been talking it over on the sideline. Again, Whitlow got injured in the first quarter and is out for the game. Did he fumble? No, no, okay. He just didn't. Herbie, we got a guy down after that play. Short yardage situation here. You go deep here, don't you? Wouldn't you? You only got two wide, though. And he's tackled mm. at about the 49. So he decides to hold on to it, and that's going nowhere. See, this is where I'd bring in Joey Gatewood if I didn't have Whitlow in the game. Bring in Joey Gatewood for a quarterback keeper. Ooh. Well, that's not good. The punt upcoming, and they're going to come after this one. Into the end zone again. Goes into the end zone, down for a touchback. So with one quarter remaining, the Tigers in front, 21-3. Auburn up 21 to 3. They forced two turnovers. Tulane had a chance to score near the end of the first half, but uh, fumbled the ball away. And we're back to the action. It's a new possession for this offense. So Auburn's taking advantage. Tulane's been running the ball pretty well. But they keep doing these short little dink passes and they're just not going anywhere. If you're going to do a hurry-up offense, your guys need to get back. Now he's scrambling. Nowhere. And they bring him down for a sack on the play. Another sack. Daquan Newkirk, who played last week, surprisingly, uh, after undergoing Achilles sur surgery on his Achilles tendon, uh, coaches were hoping he'd be back by the fourth game of the season. Well, he made his debut in the season opener. He was cleared by doctors and played. So they're expecting him to play once again this week against Tulane at tackle. Another little screen. They're not going anywhere with that. Derek Brown's everywhere. Awaits the snap. <laughs> Tries to get around the corner. Makes it out to maybe the 40-yard line. Both teams are well aware that a score on this drive is going to create an almost insurmountable lead. This defense has really yeah, I think got this a lead's already insurmountable. Brought down after a nice run up the middle. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if the game actually transpires like this Saturday, you know? Auburn doesn't really take control until sometime in the second half. 
Next with the first down here. I don't think Bo Nix is going to be running the ball this much, but uh, big hole. Sovereign scored two touchdowns in the first two uh, possessions here in the red zone. Knicks drop for zero. Burn clock. three minutes in the game it's gonna be a hot one Saturday they're expecting kickoff temperature to be about 90 degrees at 6 30 p.m. Central Time Saturday so it's a whiteout game so everybody is being told to wear white which is probably smart considering how warm and hot it's gonna be during the day Green pass, not going to get there, but he stays in bounds to burn the clock. They'll call on the field goal unit here. This is like the most boring final three minutes of a game in NCAA football history. <laughs> the kick is up and it sails through the uprights. So Auburn's up three touchdowns, 24-2-3. One minute, 22 seconds remaining after Anders Carlson's second field goal of the game. Excellent kick. Or am I mistaken there? He's going to return it and not get he much. He makes it to the 18-yard line. Auburn's defense has really been impressive, especially these last couple of drives. Well, now you start to think about how this team has played defensively, and what it's done is set up their own offense with really good field position to give them a chance to be able to extend this lead. The defense shut them down on their last drive, forcing a quick punt. Steps <clears throat> out of bounds at about the 23-yard line. From their own 23-yard line, second down. Well, if you're uh, Kevin Steele, you would be happy forcing two turnovers and allowing only three points. And he can't get away from the pressure. And getting the fourth sack. Marlon Davidson that time. Come over the edge. Nobody home. They're stacking the line. It looks like they're coming after this punt. Auburn easily has won field position today. Kick and they just impose their will in this game. Just a complete effort. You can look at the numbers. You can see that the stats show the offense has put up the numbers. The defense has done their job. It's about as good as you can hope for. We're set to get restarted as the offense looks to build on the success of their field goal on the last drive. And he's or just run the clock out. <laughs> Second and five. Ball on the 41 yard line. So Auburn will run one more play here, and that'll do it.
As Auburn will be a 24-3 winner unless something crazy here happens. And that'll do it. 24-3. Bo Nix, 12 of 13 passing, 158 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, ran a lot in this game, too. Actually led the team with 13 rush attempts and 60 yards. Cam Martin had nine carries, 48 yards. Whitlow was doing very well. Then he got injured. Five carries, 29 yards. And, of course, Seth Williams had that 10-yard touchdown run. Cam Martin was your leader. And receptions with four, but Anthony Schwartz, of course, had that long 74 yard touchdown um, to score. I don't think Anthony Schwartz will be catching any passes against Tulane with that injured hand, so keep that in mind. No blocking data. Okay. Christian Tutt and Daniel Thomas led the way with five tackles. Uh, Daquan Newkirk with two sacks. That's something. That'd be a heck of a story. Honors Carlson made one field goal, three extra points. Sipos averaged 47.6 yards per punt, pretty good, but three touchbacks, nothing inside the 20. The two line, Justin McMillan, 13 of 17, 77 yards. Just a lot of short passes, didn't really get much going. He was also the leading rusher, 52 yards. Auburn did a pretty good job holding them in check. And as you can see, they just did not do much in the passing game. Moody, Marvin Moody leads them with 11 tackles, two tackles for loss. I don't believe they had a sack. Maybe they had one. Maybe not. So there you go. Auburn, a 24-3 winner against Tulane. Again, uh, thanks for joining me. Wouldn't be surprised if the game actually transpires like this. I think it's going to be kind of hard for, for Auburn, but we'll see. Anyway, thanks for joining me here on Twitch and on YouTube. Auburn, a winner, 24-3 in Week 2.